Coming up in this edition of the EV Revolution Show, Tesla Cybertruck. Hmm. And more stuff. Well, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 69. Sorry for the delay in getting the shows out. Uh, thank you for taking the time. I'm battling a bout of pneumonia, and I'm on the downside of it now, but it's uh, still taking a little bit of its toll. So uh, hopefully the next week or so I'll be able to shake this fully and uh, be back to regular weekly or close to weekly production. So a lot of material that's happened in the last couple of weeks, so let me get right into it. Well, first and foremost, the Tesla Cybertruck. Um Watched it live, stayed up last night and watched it. Um, you know, I thought at first they were playing a bit of a game, to be honest with you. And then as they went through, I said, okay, no, this is what they're coming to market with. So, you know, it's futuristic. It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. Pick a sci-fi movie, almost all of them. It looks like something out of that. Um, there's tons of write-ups and blogs and vlogs going on lots of people down there at tesla yesterday you know uh hooping and hollering but you know when this thing rolled up the onto the stage it was fairly low-key audience reaction and i think that set the tone for the me for the uh, reveal last night along with that kind of eerie music that they had going and this whole water world kind of Mad Max vibe from this, from everybody being dressed up and whatever. I mean, I get it. So long and short of it is, you know, the specs on this truck are awesome. There's no doubt about that, right? Tesla knows how to build electrified vehicles and, you know, great ranges, you know, anywhere from uh, my understanding, uh, 250 mile plus a different variants of it, um, a single motor, dual motor and a three motor configuration. You know, uh, Elon talked about ground clearances and, and uh, attack angles and things like that for pickup trucks. Great, I get it. Towing, 14,000, all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to go a lot into the specs. You can get all that stuff online. It's pretty readily available. Um, I just want to talk about my, my thoughts quickly on it. So, you know, I'm glad Tesla's uh, putting another fully electric vehicle into the marketplace. But I have to say I was very disappointed in this release. And... You know, I know Elon kind of set this up saying it's going to be something out of this world. It's going to be something different. And I get it. You know, Tesla wants to make a statement. Great. You know, um, the gaff with the windows breaking, you know, a little embarrassing. You know, it just the whole thing seemed awkward. Uh, that was kind of my takeaway from it as I watched it in puzzlement. But, you know, after sitting on it for a bit and uh, digesting the material, looking at some videos and, and reading some more materials, you know, it's certainly going to be a, a truck that performs. Now, my disappointment in it, though, is the marketplace. You know, Elon started the presentation by talking about the pickup truck being the largest market in the U.S. And in fact, the Ford F-150 is the number one selling vehicle globally, believe it or not. And I've talked about this many times. So there is a, a very vibrant market for pickup trucks. Um, so I get the reason to get into it. You know, Rivian and others, right? They're all, they're all getting into it. Uh, I get it. But if you're going to get into it, you have to have a degree of practicality. I think I don't think you can go too far out of the bubble on this. And I think that's what Tesla's done. Take away, you know, the Tesla fanatics and, and you guys that love Tesla and you'll buy anything from Elon. He can make a tin can and put wheels on it and a battery and you'll buy it. Great for you. But, you know, I got to look at practicality and reasoning and looking looking at how this is going to move the yardsticks forward in the battle against climate change and, and the efforts to lower greenhouse gas emissions, because that's the biggest picture. Not that this is a futuristic, cool-looking vehicle that people with lots of money are going to jump on for a status symbol. There's no doubt about that. But the average person and fleets and, and, and workplaces that buy pickup trucks, farmers, you know, you know, all these different industries, tradesmen, on and on and on, they are not going to touch this. You might get the odd one that wants to make a statement, wants to think their company's cool. But practical reasons, no matter what specs Elon puts on this, I don't see it happening, right? You look at the pickup trucks out there, the majority of that are there are actually being used in a work-type environment. They're, they're purpose 
uh, uh, bought um, for those kinds of environments. Sure, you have people that live in the suburbs that don't need a pickup truck that get that you know get a, a Raptor or whatever because it's a status symbol. They they never haul anything. They just drive drive around in this thing. I get it. There's a, there's that too. But that, in my opinion, is the minority of the sales for pickup trucks. You know, look at 150s, 250s, 350s. Look at the dualies. All these things. You know, tow trucks. All this kind of stuff that's out there. Um, it's a big industry and becoming you know bigger as we go. And I. I'm sorry to say that I don't think this truck's going to make an impact in that industry. Yeah, it'll sell some. There's no doubt about that. The Tesla name's going to carry it forward. But as far as really making an impact on the pickup truck market, no way. I don't think this thing is going to do what some of you may think it will. Please, believe me, I, I hope I'm wrong in that assumption because I want to get rid of pickup truck tailpipes. Oh my goodness, these big 250, 350 uh, uh, outfits that, with these big big diesels that are out there spewing uh, smoke. Let's get rid of them. This isn't going to do it though. I can tell you that right now. Ford, GMC, and Dodge were laughing at yesterday's reveal. They have nothing to worry about. Rivian, I mean, yeah, theirs looks a bit futuristic, but goodness me, it still conforms to what Elon said is that platform that hasn't changed for decades and decades. The reason Elon it hasn't changed is because it works. It's a working platform. People buy it for, for various reasons. Uh, most of them work related. Why change it up? Making a statement is one thing. I don't think Tesla needs to make a statement. They've proven themselves in the market over and over again by just continuing to beat analysts, continuing to not go under as many people have thought they would have for years. I don't see any reason to come out with this vehicle if they're serious about going after that market. And I don't think they are. I think this is a fun niche vehicle. They'll sell, you know, a few tens of thousands, uh, potentially. This thing's not going to be available till 2021. You know, go ahead, put your 150 bucks down, 100 bucks down, pre-order, whatever. Price points are good. I mean, you know, uh, uh, under, you know, 40, 40K US to get into, it's not bad. You know, for the size, you know, the interior is, is very Tesla-like, minimalistic, right? With the big screen and everything. It, you know, looks okay. Um, would I touch this thing? No way. Even if I was in the market for a pickup truck, I'm sorry to say. So, you know, say what you want about the, the, the Tesla pickup truck. You know, again, I'm glad they're adding another model to the lineup. But my my dose of reality here in this conversation, folks, is I, I'm really disappointed because I think Tesla had an opportunity to really jump into this market because Ford's not there yet. GMC is not there yet. Dodge isn't there yet. Rivian's an up and coming, and they're only going to maybe produce about 40,000 in the next year or so. So very small numbers compared to the, you know, uh, five, I forget what the number is for the for the F-150, but it's in the millions per year. This is not going to make a dent in that market, I'm sorry to say, and I really wish it would because that is a key market to go after. Chew on that, folks. Let me know your comments. I'm probably going to get some haters, of course. I don't hate Tesla. Um, I'm going to get some trash, uh, I'm sure, comments. I'm just speaking from a voice of reality, in my opinion, and I think this is a big miss for Tesla. Now, staying with Tesla on some more positive news, they've announced a short time ago that they're going to build Gigafactory 4 in Germany. In fact, they've narrowed it down to the Berlin area in Europe uh, at a site called uh, Grunheide, if I pronounce it that uh, correctly. Uh, it's about uh, just outside uh, of Berlin, but on the southeast side of it. Um, Tesla predicts that it'll employ up to 10,000 people with 3,000 starting in the first phase. Um, they have to get permits and permissions and all this kind of stuff, which they're working on. Uh, so they're nowhere near even breaking ground. Um, they predict that they will build batteries, uh, powertrains and vehicles starting with the Model Y. So that's great for the European markets. Um, they predict that it should be up in uh, at least first phase should be operational by the end of 2021. So we're looking at about another two years from this point, which is pretty aggressive. I mean, it takes time to build factories. I mean, certainly Shanghai is going, you know, has been built really, really fast. So, you know, uh, there's no doubt that Tesla will probably hit these timelines because they want to go to market with their products and they need to increase their production and, and supply chains as well. So uh, that's a great announcement. And uh, keep your eye on uh, if anybody's in that area and they start seeing uh, the, the factory being built. Let me know what you think. Take a couple snapshots. Going to switch gears uh, just briefly before I get into more automotive stuff. You know, I talked about mass transit in a lot of the different shows in various configurations. You know, we have buses, we have boats, we have 
uh, ferries, all this kind of stuff that can be electrified, even planes at some point, you know, at least smaller commuter planes uh, are, are on the brink of being electrified. Buses, though, you know, for mass transit is a key area. And there's a, a bunch of announcements that just came out over the last week or so. And BYD, you know, God bless them, they're leading the charge. These guys are a phenomenal company. And Los Angeles has just placed an order for 130 BYD electric buses. Um, but as part of their Green New Deal uh, for the city, uh, they should. Uh, and then LA Transit, of course, uh, wants to convert all their buses within the next decade. So um, by 2030, they want to have a 100% fully electrified fleet. That's great. I lived in LA back in the uh, 70s and early 80s. Uh, took the RTD all over the place. And I can tell you, they push out a lot of diesel smoke. So it'll be great to see this. And they're going to be built in the US, which is great as well. They're going to be built in Lancaster, California. Now, on that note with BYD, they've been doing a lot of stuff. So not only Los Angeles, but let's switch gears to Europe. And Norway has placed an order for uh, 55 BYD electric buses for uh, public transit operator uh, v, VY bus or V bus, uh, I guess it's called. Um, and uh, on top of, I think, uh, 23 that are already uh, been ordered pr uh, prior, these are uh, 12 meter buses. They should be delivered in the second quarter of next year. That's pretty aggressive. So by, by the half time of next year, and they'll be, you'll be seeing these uh, carry people around uh, Norway's capital of Oslo. So Again, another important step in public transit. And, you know, to carry on that theme, Latin America. You know, I've talked about Latin America before, my experiences in Ecuador and such. Well, BYD has just announced 379 electric buses um, in Bogota, in Colombia. And these are going to for, uh, these are for the capital's uh, uh, Trans Millennial SA Mass Transport Authority. Starting in September of next year, they're going to deploy these buses. And that's on top of 64 buses that were purchased by the city of uh, Medellin already earlier this year, which gives a total of almost 450 buses for the BYD, for the Colombian fleet for those cities from BYD. Um, that's just staggering. Now, one last announcement on buses. And are you getting tired of buses? Um, this isn't BYD. This is Volvo is going to deliver 157 electric buses for Transdev. And Transdev is in uh, the city of uh, Gothenburg. Gothenburg. Um, and these are 150 passenger buses. Now, these are the accordion-style buses, so the expansion buses, so that's why they can hold a lot of folks. Um, so there's lots of stuff going on in the busing, and uh, I'm going to get into this in another show because I don't have time today. There's so much material, but I'm going to talk about the importance of this and why this is... BYD is doing some amazing things under the radar. Nobody's really paying attention to. I try to, you know, capitalize on these announcements because I think it's very important and I'll stay tuned for an upcoming show where I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into that mass transit uh, uh, story and tell you why it's so important. So congratulations BYD and Volvo for all these wins. Quickly talk about VW, lots of announcements from them, so I'm trying to shake through what's there. But one of the important things is they've actually broke ground on the Chattanooga plant in the U.S. where they're going to be building the North America ID platforms vehicles. Um, they're expanding uh, that plant for eight, uh, with an $800 million investment. It's going to add 1,000 jobs, um, probably a bit more, uh, almost, uh, almost 600,000 square feet. And they're also going to uh, build a new battery pack assembly facility. Um, production begins in 2022, so only about two years for the ID vehicles. Uh, great, you know, we've heard a lot of stuff from them. I'm glad to see that they're actually starting to do construction and uh, start to implement those changes so they'll be ready in a couple of years. And, Vol and staying on VW, you know, their commitment to the ID platform is showing because they've just announced they're going to open another ID plant in Germany, this time in Dresden. Um, so selected as the next assembly for Germany, they're going to roll out, uh, it should be ready by end of next year, fall or, or, or uh, end of next year, which is pretty cool. Um, it doesn't, you know, they're just going to add on to the ID3 building because I think they anticipate a lot of orders for this vehicle. So I don't think that the Swickow is the only plant that can handle those orders, especially when you're looking at a pretty big market of, of Europe and Asia. So wait and see what happens there, but it's great to see that they're uh, building new plants and adding on to existing plants. Uh, you know, their overall plan is 75 all electric models uh, and 60 hybrid vehicles, and uh, probably a mix of hybrid and plug in, I don't know, uh, within the next decade, which is pretty aggressive. They want to sell 26 million EVs a year by 
the end of the 2020s. By 2029, very aggressive targets. They need these plants to spool up to be able to do that. Anybody lives in that area, let me know what you're seeing. So let's bring some more cars back into the fold here, bring some things down to reality. A quick mention about Skoda. They've actually just started manufacturing the CityGo EIV. Uh, it's a lot to say. Uh, this is an assembly line in Bratislava in Slovakia. I've been there, beautiful city. Uh, great people, had a lot of fun there. Uh, I'm glad to see that's going on. Some good jobs, there, of course. This is their first all-electric uh, vehicle with practical advantages, and they're going to maintain a high manufacturing quality, all based on the VW MEB platform, of course. Deliveries will begin at the early part of next year, so I anticipate, let's say, the first quarter or the first half for sure. Uh, this is a 61 kilowatt motor, uh, 210 newton meters of torque, um, capacity is just under 37 kilowatt hour battery pack, so a nice little commuter slash regional vehicle, uh, a WLTP range of 260 kilometers, which I believe is about 125 miles or something like that, 150 miles, let's say. Um, that's WLTP, so back that down a little bit. Um, all this other specs, you know, standard stuff. What caught my eye on this announcement is the pricing. Again, I've talked about bringing EVs to the mass market. This is a great way to do that, right? A lot of people, again, they're only driving 25, 30, 35 miles, 50, 60 kilometers a day for their, for the majority of the use cases, or as a great second vehicle, you know, where you're just doing going back and forth to work and doing some, some commute stuff and uh, routine stuff. List price in Germany, just under 21,000 euros. And uh, when you add in some environmental bonuses and stuff like that that are out there, some incentives, you can get down to uh, just over 16,000 euros. Uh, now you're talking, right? Now you're talking a very compelling vehicle uh, for those use cases uh, at a very good price point. In the UK, it's going to be just uh, under just over 20,000 pounds before the grant. So you can get that under 20,000 pounds, closer to about 17, 16 and change thousand pounds. Again, compelling reasons to look at this car. Too bad it's not coming to North America, but I'm glad for Skoda. And uh, if anybody's got one on order, let me know what you're hearing. All right, and one of the big announcements after, I guess, the Cybertruck, I think that stole some of the thunder, but earlier uh, in the last week or so uh, that I've been trying to gather information for this show, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Love it or hate it, I think it's a beautiful looking EV, uh, or SUV, CUV. I'm fine with the Mustang branding. Um, I mean, Ford's made a decision that they're just going to get into the trucks, SUVs, and keep the Mustang line. That's it. They're going to get rid of sedans and passenger cars. At least that's what they said a while ago. They might be changing. So, you know, carrying on with the Mustang uh, vision, I think, is fine. Tons of different models, you know, ranging from 60 plus thousand U.S. on the high side down to the entry point of about uh, just under 44,000 U.S. Again, without the any incentives, of course, Ford still qualifies for the um, U.S. federal tax credit as one area. So, you know, all kinds of options, uh, everything from uh, 230 miles, 370 kilometers of range up to 270 miles or 435 kilometer ranges. Um, different battery pack sizes to be able to get those ranges and all that kind of stuff. You can go look at the specs. Um, I, you know, I liked it. I like it. Um, I think it's a great looking vehicle. Um, very well put together. You know, again, I wish it was a bit cheaper to, from a price point to be able to kind of get more folks into that. It's, you know, at 45, 44, 45,000 US, it's not cheap again, even, but you know, with 7,500 in tax credit, if you qualify, that brings it down to almost mid thirties and that's, that's getting there. So, you know, you get a lot for, for that. Um, of course, they're going to come out with a GT version in the spring of 2021 and all that good stuff. And, and again, give you as give you options for as much money as you want to spend with them. Um, deliveries won't begin until the beginning uh, of 2021. So we have to wait about another year or so for this, but, uh, you know, what I saw in, in all the videos and the announcements, this looks production ready, beautiful looking car. Um, I'm fine with the big display. It's some people are saying they don't like the knob. They don't like the such a big, it, you know, I think we're kind of getting used to some of the tech now and the bigger displays. I'm fine with it. It's going to be a personal preference, but it looks good. And uh, I wish Ford all the best on this. Now, if you haven't heard, Audi, of course, released their second fully electric uh, vehicle based on the e-tron family called the e-tron Sportback, a smaller version of the e-tron that's available today. Um, kind of like an SUV coupe, as they're calling it. Two drive options, single dual motor. Uh, there's a 55 Quattro, delivers 265 kilowatts uh, power, 300 in this boost mode. I don't know why everybody's talking about boost modes. 
uh, putting these things in there. They really don't need them. 50 Quattro provides 230 kilowatts based on um, 71 kilowatt battery for the, for the lower trim and a 95 kilowatt hour battery for the higher trim. Uh, ranges in the area of 446 kilometers up to, that's WLTP range, so back that down a bit. What's that going to be? 400, 400 kilometers, you know, 250 miles, something like that. Um, no pricing yet. Um, it'll have faster charging capabilities, all that good stuff that we're starting to see as standard. So again, I'm just glad to see that Audi is continuing to evolve their lineup. This will be lower than the e-tron that's available from a price point. So that will help to at least start to engage a little bit more of the marketplace. And those people that have some of the older, uh, smaller Audi uh, SUVs that want to move in to a smaller electrified unit, this will be a good fit for them. Quick announcement from Mercedes about their G-Class. The G-Class, I believe, is one of their most expensive vehicles that they offer in a, in a ICE uh, configuration. Well, they've announced that they are going to go for the, move forward with a fully electrified version of that. Um, it most likely will be very expensive and very limited. And, of course, there's already an Austrian company called uh, Kriesel Electric that kind of beat them. They, they take existing G uh, wagons and they convert it, uh, G classes, and they convert it to electrified. You've seen probably Arnold Schwarzenegger buy one and back them and all this kind of press that they got. Nice looking thing. So I think what we'll see from Mercedes is going to be pretty close to what's what's already out there by this other company. Um, I don't know if it's going to lessen what they do. We'll have to wait and see. No, no specs, no um, pricing. I mean, it's going to be expensive, anything like that. So, you know, figure 250, let's figure three to 350 kilometer range. So two, 200 to 250 miles, something like that. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, again, you know, good to see more choices coming in. Uh, I wish it would, again, I wish it would come down in price and these manufacturers would start thinking a little bit more lower. There's going to be a high end, you know, it'll be a very selective model, but good to see something else uh, uh, from a choice in the electrified market. Now, sticking with automotive, VW did introduce a new uh, seventh uh, vehicle uh, in the ID family, a concept vehicle called the Space Vision. Um, this is not a space age looking vehicle like the Cybertruck. Uh, very, very uh, nice looking, elegant. Uh, they designed this with a bit of, of a lower drag coefficient so that they could get more range out of it. It's uh, anticipated that the station wagon, because, you know, hey, I, I used to have a station wagon way back when. Great vehicles. Um, very, very purposeful. Um, 250 kilowatt electric uh, motor on that, based on, of course, MEB platform. 82 kilowatt hour battery. Um, five up to 590 kilometers, almost 600 kilometers WLTP. So even at EPA, you're in the 500 kilometer range, 300 mile range. Uh, that's impressive, in my opinion. Um, that's going to be, you know, it's going to be really, really nice. Um, not much else, you know, uh, from that as far as you know, they'll have all wheel drive, one at one wheel, one motor, all that kind of stuff. Um, it'll be fully uh, introduced at the end of 2021 and it will be available in North America, Europe and China. So that's exciting that we will be able to get this vehicle here. Um, there is a market for these kind of vehicles. I mean, this is not an SUV. This is not a CUV. This is a station wagon uh, vehicle. Um, you know, Toyota has the, um, is it the Venza? Somebody's going to correct me. You know, the one I'm talking about, that's kind of a station wagon-ish too. Uh, there is a market for this, and I think they're going to do well, depending on what the price point, but it does look very nice. So stay tuned, and we'll uh, get more info as it comes out. And finally, I mentioned drag coefficient in the in the VW Space Vision, and this this uh, article caught my eye a little while ago. Uh, the Light Year One. I did read something about it way back when, uh, maybe a year or so ago. And now they're they're kind of moving forward with this this into a more reality vehicle, and this is a a vehicle that they've achieved under 0 0.20 drag coefficient. That is amazing. That's you know really slick. Like you know this is the kind of stuff that you see these solar races you know where they try to go as long as they can and you know or somebody's pedaling it as a bike you know these kind of shapes right really low wind resistant to really get their efficiencies and they're they're actually taking that approach to a production vehicle and that's the light year one which they claim that they want to get to about 83 watt hours uh, per kilometer or 134 watt hour per mile of efficiency these are wltp uh, numbers so epa is going to be different uh, that's still exciting. Uh, 2021 is when they anticipate this cool looking car to get into the marketplace. Now, what's unique about it as well is uh, it does have a big, big solar array on the top of it. So it can you can get up to about 60 kilometers or about 37 miles of range just on solar alone. 
So similar to that Scion that I've been talking about for my friends over there, um, there's about 30 miles, I think, or 30 kilometers, so maybe a little less because it's a smaller platform. This is a larger vehicle. That's pretty cool, though. Uh, so if you're Arizona and you're just sitting there, you'll fuel up without even having to plug in. Now, what really caught my eye is the range. They're claiming a range of up to 450 miles, 725 kilometers, WLTP. Back that down, you're into the 600 kilometer range, you know, 400 miles. I mean, that's amazing. On a 60 kilowatt hour battery, hasn't been confirmed yet. Um, all that other stuff, you multiple types of charging, as I mentioned, you got solar, you got uh, your standard uh, level one or level one, level two, and then 60 kilowatt DC um, for charging and all that good stuff. Exciting, exciting vehicle. I think you know it just it. Sh and again, this is futuristic looking but still within the realm of what we conceive as a four-door sedan or four-door hatchback a sedan hatchback vehicle to be not out of the way you know kind of a little bit of that honda insight-ish type of approach um and you know of course the clarity has the rear wheels i think half cover too for aerodynamics so so it's an approach that works good luck to um to these guys and uh, we'll wait and see what they actually come out with uh, as uh, next year progresses all right, folks, I made it through the show without coughing too much. Thanks for your patience. That's it for episode 69 here of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to tune in. Lots of information I wanted to get out to uh, catch up on being off for a couple of weeks here. Um, don't forget, again, thank you for watching. As always, appreciate it. Don't forget comments, uh, likes, all that kind of stuff. Subscribe, please. Click the bell. You'll get notified. All that, that stuff. Um, appreciate... I appreciate a lot of people uh, trying to help me get to my subscriber count of 10,000 by the end of the year. I mentioned a couple of shows ago that I didn't think I'd get there. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing this big jump in the numbers. So uh, I'm very happy with that. Again, I'm here just you know, to give you information to help, to help uh, inform, keep you educated, and maybe make a decision to go electrified if it makes sense for you. So I appreciate that. Thank you, of course, for my Patreon supporters. As always, a uh, new supporter jumped on about a week ago. Thank you very much. You know who you are. Uh, everybody's recognized on every show and the thank you credits that come up. So, you know, I want to make sure that everybody's recognized for that. Thank you for that. Don't forget Fully Charged. Again, America. I'm sounding like a broken record here. Austin, February 1st, 2nd. Tickets are on sale. 15% savings by using the code EV Revolution that you see there. Uh, and it is case sensitive. So please type it the way you see it. If anybody's going, please look me up. I'll be there for a couple of days for sure. Uh, won't be hard to find me there uh, at the show. And again, thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules. It's an exciting, exciting time in this marketplace. Uh, you know, just a couple of short years ago, there was only two or three, four players kind of that we kept talking about. And now, I mean, you know, doing a show and I'm talking about all these different manufacturers and it's changing constantly. Uh, it's exciting times in the electrified marketplace. And again, stay tuned for an upcoming show that I'm going to dive a little bit deeper into that bus market and why it's so important and that we should take notice of it. But until that show, please, everybody stay safe. Uh, all the best to you. And I will see you, of course, when I see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.